so, so I write books about people living with neurological diseases and disorders, so it makes sense that I would write about ALS. Um, but there's a little twist to that, too. I like to write about people living with diseases and disorders that are neurological that, are, that tend to be ignored, feared, and misunderstood. Because fiction is a really powerful way to reach everybody. People will read novels and go to see movies. They might not read the Journal of Neuroscience. So this is a way to reach folks. Um, but with ALS, there, there was this thing. There was this ice bucket challenge, right? Did you all, everybody, we dumped buckets of ice water over our heads, yeah. Which was an amazing thing for awareness. But interestingly, there's more to awareness. In my opinion, you have to couple that awareness with something called compassion. Because otherwise, that awareness just stays in your head. It's an intellectual knowing. So for most po folks who aren't touched by this disease, as you all are in this room, they dumped that bucket of ice water over their heads, they shot the video, they posted it to Facebook, and then they went and had lunch. And they did the next thing and the next thing, and they ne never really had to consider what it might feel like to live with ALS. And so the compassionate awareness thing has to happen, and that's why I write what I, that's why I write what I write, and how, why I do what I do. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about how I came to know Ron and Compassionate Care ALS, because I couldn't ask for a more perfect organization led by a more perfect human being if what I'm after is trying to understand compassionate awareness. So I think it's so fitting, and I just actually figured this out tonight with Erin, that the reason I know Ron, and of course I think, you know, I was gonna know you no matter what, but the real reason I came to know you was because of a shaman, which I think is so cool, right? So my college roommate and Erin went to Peru with a shaman that we, all three of us know. And so my roommate introduced me to Erin because she knew I was going to be writing a book about ALS. So I spoke with Erin, who is fantastic, and Erin, wherever you are, thank you for getting me started. Um, where are you, Erin? Erin! Um, and so she began this journey, and, and at the end of that call, I said, well, who should I, who should I speak to next? And she said, you have to talk to Ron. And so I emailed Ron, and probably within five minutes, I'm on the he calls me, and we're on the phone. And he says, okay, I'm sending you my book, and then, like, I think we were in your car next, <laughs> like, visiting someone. So this book, when people ask me about the research for this book, and it involves reading everything, and it involves going to Mass General and shadowing Merritt and her team, and Darlene, wherever you are, amazing, beautiful Darlene. Um, Again, being willing to show me what you all do day in and day out. Um, the folks at ALS TDI um, who are doing amazing research, who introduced me to so many people who are in this room, um, including the Gosnells. I don't know where you are. I can't see you, but you're here somewhere. <laughs> Love you. Um, but, you know, my most intimate relationship in this book, and you talk, Ron, about how this is about relationships. Writing these stories are personal and about relationships for me as well. It's not, yes, I'm writing about these diseases, but they're about people with diseases. There's a huge difference there. This isn't about sympathy. Sympathy is when you feel for someone, and they're at a distance. They're way over there. Empathy collapses that distance, and it's about feeling with people. It's about being with people. And so while I'm learning that with respect to ALS, I also got to spend time with Ron and see what it is that you do and learn from you. And you are the most beautiful, unexpected gift for me to get in the course of writing this book. This book would not be what it is without your example and leadership. Um, it was just such an extraordinary pleasure and honor to watch what you do and see how people, the need that people have for what you bring. And it's not, like folks said, it's not just the equipment, and man, do they need that equipment, and you don't know you need it until you need it right now. And Ron's already ahead of you, he knows, you're, he knows when it's coming and when he should be walking through that front door for you. But it's also about the conversations. It's about meeting people where they are. Um, 
and, and that's such a, an extraordinary skill that not a lot of people consider. Just being able to walk into someone's house and meet them where they are. And for all the folks I met with ALS, while this journey has so many similar threads, everybody's experience is so different. And to be able to, to be present with folks and, and experience who they are and their families and what they want and what this might look like for them. Um, I learned so much that was crucial for me to write this story with integrity and authenticity from you, Ron. And then beyond that, I just, I learned so much about how to be a better human being from you. And I think we all feel that, that yes, this is about ALS, but it's also just about our humanity. And I think that's why all of us feel so um, em just empowered and there's so much love that we wanna, we feel fired up and lit up around you because you sort of remind us of our human connection, that that's always possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just, this is, I guess just an opportunity to express just so much love and gratitude to Ron and Compassionate Care ALS and that, you know, we became friends so that I could write this book, but you've got me for life. So thank you, I love you.